Welcome to my last coverage of the Chessball Masters. It's now over. We have a winner, a second place, third place, even a fourth place. And uh, I'm going to be looking at my pick of game of the day uh, from the last round of the Chessball Masters. So let's uh, just have a look at what game I've decided to, to go over. And it was actually the first game of the day, and it was Liam Kwong Lee with the white pieces against Wesley So in a, a very topical variation of the London system. Maybe uh, the most topical variation of the London system at the moment, uh, a variation which is, um, you have to know really, I guess, if you're gonna play the London system. And I, I, I suppose I'm a bit of an expert in the London system, which is an opening that Liam Lequong plays with white where you, bring the bishop out now the Jabava London's where you put the knight there on c3 and the normal classical London systems where you put the pawn there and the reason I say I'm a bit of an expert is you know I've done numerous DVDs on it for chess base um, and I've played it quite a lot and studied it a lot as well so we're hoping actually to get a really good uh, ginger gem course out on it soon but first of all I'm filming something else at the moment be with you soon and uh, Wesley is incredibly strong in the opening, right? All these players are, but Wesley seems to be just really well prepared. He, of he obviously spends a lot of time looking at chess. Uh, now, Liam plays knight to f3. This is one way to get into the London system. My preferred way of playing it is with bishop f4. And I find this move a little bit more flexible. Uh, the point being, if Black now plays the King's Indian, uh, Benoni, Benko, Grunfeld move G6, uh, we don't have to put the knight on F3, which Liam, Liam has shown is very playable, but I prefer now going into Jabava London. This is my recommenda recommended way to play, because I like playing the Jabava London against G6. We're trying to go E4, and after D5, we play E3, and because our knight is not in the way of the queen, we can play h4, h5 and support that pawn. And uh, I've done some videos on this if you want to check my YouTube thing, or you can you can wait until we bring out our ginger gym course on this. So bishop f4 also has the advantage that if black plays the same variation, we can leave the knight here. And again, I talk about this a lot in my DVDs, that we can play the normal London system moves and that is knight d2 in the in the normal London system. We put this here, and after knight c6, we play c3. And it's quite clever in some ways leaving the knight on this square. The reason it's quite clever is if Black plays queen b6 as Wesley so does in the game, we can now play queen b3. And the queen exchange gives us a slight advantage, a file. And one of the main moves here was c4. But now we don't swap there helping black open it up we go queen c2 and we play b3 next and black has to take that we get a better pawn structure let's just put that on the board because we have more look at this we have one pawn mass very nice uh, and we have c4 later on and there's no possibilities of bishop f5 because we can just move our rook and there's just very little subtle move orders you need to know but you, you've got to you know think while you're doing it now the reason that's relevant because in the game if you want to avoid this sharp variation and you don't want to look at it a lot then if we follow the standard London system moves e3 knight c6 white now has a decision to make he either plays c3 or knight d2 to try and get in the normal London system now knight d2 was the move that Liam uh, played uh, now c3 is actually what most people play but again I've talked about this a lot I consider this to be uh, a slight mistake don't like this move because now queen b6 is annoying this is always something to watch out for and you've got to think how you're going to deal with this and if we try queen b3 which is our standard move the f it's now different because after c4 we don't want to take the queen open up the a file queen c2 black can now play bishop f5 so uh, you know the point being we don't really want to move that queen again and if we capture this one is strong because of our rook winning so that's why knight bd2 is the topical line and now queen b6 is is the sharp variation 
Now Wesley So in a previous round did go e6 here and after c3 he put his bishop on e7 which I have to say I love playing against. Liam played knight into this square and after castles bishop d3 the game went something like this and now given a chance white can even start playing these two moves and I like delaying castle and kingside here to give myself that option because we have a beautiful bishop attacking and the game went knight d7 and here Liam just castled and got quite a promising position actually which seems which seems absolutely fine but there are some other interesting possibilities like moving the knight to f3 immediately and this is just supporting our guy there and in some positions we're threatening h4 on the greek gift so i'd be very happy to get this in a game nice attacking chances so queen b6 and we will have a look at the theory of this again with g chess at the end because it's, it's topical and as i keep saying if you subscribe to g chess yourselves you'll be able to do that and this is now the key variation where white sacrifices or offers the sacrifice of a pawn here but black has damaged white's pawn structure uh, the only thing is that black's a little bit high behind in development now c4 here immediately is another option another theoretical option we'll have a look at that after the game they followed a long prepared line now with queen c3 and now white pinned the knight at the moment it's equal on material but black has to be very careful for example capture, capturing here does allow c4 does allow the position to open up so g6 trying to develop and now the very sharp move e4 and again clearly this is this is all theory i'm a little bit out of date with this and see when you play these sharp lines you you, you have to make sure you learn the theory that's why i was giving you some alternatives earlier on and after pawn takes e4 again this is just one of those openings you must know because white's given up a pawn but he's got the bishop coming into e5 uh, the queen coming to a5 is best if it goes to c5 bishop takes f6 is very strong for white and the point being we're going to hit the queen with tempo and i don't think black gets enough compensation in this position by grabbing it's an extra rook after all so queen a5 doesn't allow this tempo on the queen but now castles is again the theoretical uh sharp variation and again i'm not even going to say this is very exciting stuff because i find when something's been analyzed very deeply it's not even that exciting it's just a memory test you know maybe 20 30 years ago when people didn't have computers you could say oh very exciting play because they're working out for themselves but in these positions you're literally just turning on a computer and memorizing uh, and again, this is why I keep mentioning G chess, but tools like this will give you the advantage. Strong engines, there's loads of other things you can use. And now after E takes F3, Bishop takes C6 following the best line. Queen takes F3 immediately, trying to capture here. It does allow, I think, a strong sacrifice. Queen takes B5. <laughs> uh, and let's remember now, black was one piece up. He's now two pieces up and after rook takes queen knight takes here he has three pieces for the queen and he has a very solid position he's going to castle safely and three pieces is generally worth more than a queen I, you nearly always want to have the three pieces rather than the queen so that's why white captures on c6 and now captures on f3 and you can see here white's compensation for the piece is quite clear black hasn't got castled Black is threatened with things, and you have to know how to defend this line. But Wesley comes incredibly well prepared, and he plays knight d5, giving back some material to gain the initiative. Now, queen to d8 is a much more passive move here, and there's numerous ways white can get full compensation, even just rook e1, um, keeping ideas of just taking the knight is going to get the piece back with a big attack. So I really like knight d5, but again, we're, we're following theory. And in this position, bishop takes h8 was played quickly by Lee. Now, I don't know if anyone's looked at this position. We'll have a look at it afterwards, but the line I'm going to look at afterwards as a suggested possibility, and the way I'd want to play, is knight to e4. Trying not to grab a free rook, but trying to keep the attack going. Uh, and we'll have a look at this. Maybe I'm going to see if this is a novelty. That's why I love putting it on... You know, checking afterwards to see if 
you know, I put this on the computer, the computer thought this was an idea, and this is how you develop openings yourselves at home. This is like what all top players do. If you want to be an international player, this is the kind of research you have to do. You have to look at the games of top players and you have to think for yourself, maybe using the computer gradually in the background. And here, my instinct is that rather than grabbing a rook and maybe going on defensive, I'd rather keep the attack going. So I want to bring my knight in. I'm a piece down, but I'm going to try to keep the initiative with c4. Uh, and then the way we analyze this, we can check on g-chess. As, as you know, if there have been games played in this, we put it on a strong computer, check on a strong computer, have a look at it over a board. Uh, and then you have a weapon that will surprise your opponents. This is how top players uh, develop. Now the point is, after bishop takes h8, queen takes d2, black has a knight and a bishop for the piece. And I'm sure this has all been analyzed by both players. c4, this knight is gonna be lost. But after f6, it, it actually transpires that um, the bishop is also lost and the black king is now very safe on this square, or should be. Well, I say very safe, it's safe. And here, Liam plays rook fe1, a normal move, trying to get the bishop out. Uh, and again, this is a position you'd have to analyze deeply if you wanted to play this line. Maybe rook fd1 is a better move, but again, it's so complex. Let's have a look at the game. The problem with this is that after king f7, really now we have to take on d5, queen takes d5. Black has certainly got the preferable position. This bishop is dead, he has the two bishops, and the rooks can't get in. So what I was really impressed with from this point on was Liam's extremely accurate and tricky play to keep the pressure on Wesley So in a worse position. Now he correctly, he plays most of the game now correctly uh, until he gets in time trouble. He correctly keeps the queens on. Now had he captured on d5 and played c6 and they both needed to analyze this, the idea is to go c7, rook, b8. He's one tempo too slow because black gets the rook there and after rook b7, bishop h6, it's it's probably just winning for black here. This pawn will eventually queen. We're going to win that bishop, and we're covering we're covering c8 extremely well. So keeping the queens on is correct. And now queen e3 is an interesting move. Now rook b7 is tempting, threatening to take on f6, but after king g8, we can try to sacrifice on f6, but after bishop f7 here, just look how solid black is. And again, two bishops is much better than a rook. So he plays very cleverly. He plays queen e3, and this stops king g8. Black plays bishop f5, and now black grabs on a2. And now another great move by Liam. He can't do anything with any of his pieces here. So when you can't do anything to improve with your pieces, you know, except for artificial, you know, artificial moves like, let's say an artificial move here would be like rook a1, you're not really doing anything, you're just doing a real, you're hitting, you're creating a threat against thin air. When you create threats, you've got to do something positive for your position. But remember, pawns can be very useful, and here he introduces the idea of using the G pawn, preferably to come to G5, because when we get rid of the F6 pawn, you might be able to get your bishop out. Black aims to stop that. Another excellent move, Queen F3, just going for that one again, pressurizing here. And this is where black starts to go wrong. He plays the kind of normal looking king g8, but as David Howe pointed out in the commentary, the move queen a4 is a much better move, defending those two threats, defending g4, defending c6, and we can pick that bishop up at leisure. And I don't know if white can improve his position anymore now. I don't see what white can do in this position. He's done everything he can. So king g8 allowed this counterplay with g4. And the point now is that it gets a little bit messy because the rook comes into d7. There were very short a time here, and, and again, one of the main issues that Wesley had here was the positioning of his queen. He should have brought his queen to c4 to bring it back towards the game. He doesn't need to rush capturing on h8. This allows always some opportunities of taking there and even taking on c5. No rush to grab that piece. After he grabbed the piece, Liam Le Kwong takes his opportunity to go rook takes e7. And all of a sudden, this king is just too exposed. Wesley tries to check it, 
And now, well, there's a big idea of coming into the h7 square. So Wesley tries to defend h7, but here, queen takes c6, attacking the rook. The rook moves, queen c7, triple power on this file. Also attacking the rook. The main idea though is rook check and rook check on g7. So let's say rook to b1, triple power, we can go check. If you take this one, I can go check and mate, juicy. If you don't take this one, I will go check and mate. Triple power is pretty powerful. Oh yeah. So queen b1 was played because Wesley is trying to find every way to defend. And I have to even admit that instead of queen c7, there was a much better move that was winning here for white. Maybe, well, I'll leave that to you guys in the chat. I might even give uh, someone a free DVD for finding. I might not, depends what mood I'm in. But there's a better move than queen c7. Please discuss in the chat. Now, after queen b1, here, rook e6 was the correct winning move. Just simply coming around and taking this pawn. And there would be no defense here. But Liam, they're both in time troll, plays rook d8. And here, after black plays rook d8, he's winning again. And there's one chance here for Wesley to save the game. And he can do that with queen f1. And it's all about the queen being an active defender. Wesley, on a better day, would have found these moves easily. The queen is going to get a perpetual, maybe even get an attack here. And it doesn't matter about taking here because, well, we can capture on this square and uh, this allows us a number of checks and the problem after queen takes d8 you have to play king g8 to defend your bishop but now rook e8 and it's very straightforward we're going to take that bishop rook and queen attacking a lone king is going to be checkmate so the standings um at the end of it and we can see here that uh well well done to uh well done to Wesley. He, he drew that day. He came back after that, two all. But Liam Lequong made himself proud, I feel. He got second place. And a little bit of a shock for third. Vladislav Artimev uh, beat Aronian. Artimev, in, in my eyes, is going from strength to strength. He was actually a great outside bet, I felt, to win the whole tournament at like 30 to 1 before the tournament. I was very tempted to put a little bet on him. Uh, I'm glad I didn't in the end. <laughs> I mean, if you're not going to bet on Wesley to win these tournaments, you're probably going to lose your money, it seems. Wesley's just like evens to win these tournaments, no matter who he plays. Now, there were some moments. Um, I, I do want to check on G-Chess. So let's uh, let's have a look at those moments that we, we can just try and uh, have a look at the opening. And, you know, it's a very sharp opening line. And this queen b6 move. Well, first of all, I do want to have a look at this uh, way that Wesley played in the first game. Um, and I thought a key position was something around here. So let's see what we've got in our top games. Uh, Podomarioff has won a game. Okay. Just want to see what information we got. Online games. Daniel Narodic, she lost a fair few losses. Okay, he beat Ferruja there. That was in 2019, and this was in 2020. Do we have any YouTube videos? We do. Wow. <laughs> I didn't even... Okay, look, I'm just going to put... You know, my memory is so bloody terrible, but I'm going to have a look at the YouTube video and see what I recommend you play, or what maybe I play. This is going to be interesting. Did I win? Let's have a little look, shall we? Um, oh, learn the Jabava London. Look, this is actually in one of my YouTube videos, which you can now move on to, and you can have a look. Let's just see. E5. So let's have a look at this one first. And this is a key move in the London system. And this is a move that really helps us generate a brilliant attack. One thing I think you should always do really against Bishop E7 Where's is delay castling. Do not castle because we want to use our pawns to create an attack. And our rook is best on H1 as we shortly see. It's quite funny because I know a lot of people are commentating when I spoke about the London system. They said, oh, it's, it's, it's a boring opening. Why are you, an aggressive player, doing a DVD on a boring opening? Now, I don't think that's true. I think you can make nearly any opening what yeah, you yeah, want it to become. That plays a move. Three to increase it. 
queen h3 oh, oh, queen. and this is another very good way to play because you're increasing the pressure on this pawn okay and all you need to do now that's enough is enough of that and um so okay so you can see it's very useful this youtube search but what about the the real sharp main line stuff with rook b1 now i'm sure c4 is a move here so i'm just going to have a look uh magnus carlson had this okay let's have a look at the magnus carlson game well he played rook b1 did this this was played in let's have a look at the details 2020 and it now okay so he didn't play e4 so you can probably play this a little bit quieter if you don't want to play all the theory and he just did it in a much more positional way and this seems let's have a look well, it seems it seems okay i guess so all oh right fair enough um and maybe i'll put the opening tree on so rook b1 so c4 has played played two times but it's got um and black has won both times so maybe c4 is not the move okay let's have a look at this idea with g6 and this idea of e4 has many people played that erroneans played it against wesley so so how did that go well that did okay so obviously if we go back to the game um here d takes e4 is wesley so's um improvement okay and grischuk has had this and he lost to chips beer that's a nice name and chips beer did take here okay so how did this end up this looks very dangerous black i'll put the computer on and the computer thinks that white's basically winning here don't always trust the games online because they're they're played um they're played, you know, it could be a bullet game. And and just simply castles as Gr as Grishchuk plays here. Okay, it looks like white's going to be doing very well in this position. So I don't trust that variation. Uh, and again, I'm just trying to learn this as we go. So queen a5, and let's go with this. Seems to be the best move. One game online. And Gukesh had this. Okay, interesting. And Gukesh had this line, which went castles. Bishop takes f6. So he played bishop takes, and this is the first new move. Uh, previously, bishop takes c6. So is this worth thinking about? Let's leave the computer on. Pawn takes, and now he took here. And we're a piece down. The computer is evaluating this, coming up with some, coming up with some thoughts here. And this is like another interesting way that you can play. And just the fact that Gukesh plays it might be worth investigating. This is like the latest theory in the position. Uh, but the computer does think black's better here, but certainly don't always believe the computer 100%. It's worth going a little bit deeper into the analysis uh, yourself, but it gives you a good overview, overview of what's happening. Okay, so interesting. So again, I'm learning quite a lot from doing these videos. Uh, and again, you can see I'm not spending long on the improvements, but hopefully some of them will stick in there. I could spend an hour on each of these games with G-Chess and really get into uh, thinking uh, about what, what the right ways to play are. But, um, you know, uh, that's that's something maybe you guys want to do at home. So, uh, cheers. Do subscribe to the channel. And uh, that's the end of my commentary for Chessball Masters. We'll be getting back with some other funky videos now as we, uh, as we move on.